speed, air, expansion, growth, like just really taking all of this beautiful energy that we've been experiencing in the cosmos. Hopefully it's showing up in your life too, but just taking this beautiful energy that's in the cosmos and starting to implement it. Um, I'm not sure what the theme is for the coming week, but I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like there's just a magical quality to everything right now. So I know we get stuck in our minutia. We have like our day to day, all the things that we need to focus on that pull us away from the magic of life, right? But what I'd like to entertain is that that pulling away, that um, thought process that we're being pulled away from the magic of life is actually the magic of life, right? So um, good morning. So uh, I want to just play with that idea today, right? So I don't know how that's going to show up in asana, but we're going to play. Make sure you grab two blocks. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and close the eyes. We'll take three cleansing breaths. Big inhale through the nose. Sit up nice and tall. Elongate your spine. Exhale all the breath out through the mouth. Inhale again, super tall spine. Out through the mouth, exhale. One more time, big deep breath in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth, exhale. Let's take one hand and place the fingertips on the earth and the other hand, just take it to the heart space. And just find ujjayi breath, allowing the breath to come in through the nose and out through the nose. Solidifying this connection that we have, right? To the earth, to this body. Every now and again, I like to, you know, remember that I'm telling myself to breathe. So I'm, I don't just have an awareness of the breath, I'm actually consciously directing my breath. And in that conscious directing of breath, that in and of itself is magic. I like to take a moment, especially at this time of the year to notice in the morning, the quiet, you know, the quiet breeze. Like if you really listen, you can hear the breeze. You can hear the birds. Like all these beautiful things that sometimes we tend to kind of walk by or not notice throughout our day. This morning I witnessed a little, I don't know what the bird was. I didn't have my glasses on, but it was sitting next to a little hummingbird and they were like literally carrying on a conversation. So I think throughout our life, we breeze by these things. And then at the end of our life, my assumption would be that like, wow, that, that, that was so magical. But maybe let's set an intention to find those magic uh, points of our day uh, every day. And then taking the hand that's on the earth and placing it on top of the hand that's at the heart and then interlacing the fingers and just kind of holding the heart in the hands for a moment. So I want to begin with the Guru Mantra. I haven't chanted it in a while, so I think it would be a good one. And I want you to feel the vibration at the throat. Right? So we'll just do a call and response. Guru Brahma. Guru Vishnu. Guru Devo Maheshwaraha.
Guru Satcha. Haram Ram Ha. Tasma Shri Guru De Namaha. Asma Shri Guru De Namaha. Let's do the last one together and then follow it with an Om. Tasma Shri Guru De Namaha. Thanks so much, uh, ladies. Always happy to be here. Go ahead and open the eyes with the breath. Let's find our way into all fours and start to move the spine in cat cow. So fingertips can turn behind you as always, right? Uh, or they could go uh, forward. Either way is just fine. But let's cultivate an awareness around uh, the breath and movement with the breath. So inhaling to lift the heart and exhaling to round the spine. Good. And then inhaling to lift heart, exhale, rounding spine. And find my playlist. There she is. Good. And feel every single vertebra along the spinal column. Good. Take three more breaths. That next round, go ahead and hold it, pulling the chin all the way into the chest, hollowing out the belly, pushing the floor away from you. So I want you to feel that sense of almost like you were a cat and you were going to pounce, right? So just allow that feeling of deep rounding in the spine, opening in the upper back. And then inhale, lift the heart. Open the collarbones, hold that for a moment. And then exhale and release flat back. Turn the fingertips forward. Make sure the hands are directly underneath the shoulders. Let's curl the toes under and push back through the heels so you're stretching the bottoms of your feet. Reach your right arm up toward the sky as high as you possibly can. Follow with the gaze as, well, as long as it's comfortable. And then exhale, slide that arm underneath. Let's go ahead and fold it. Place the side of the head or the ear on the floor. Feel free to walk the left fingertips forward. Feel free to step the left leg back. And then if you can, maybe take that left leg off onto the wooden floor. So it kind of goes out to the left side. And then maybe that left hand joins the right hand and maybe it grabs the toe of the left foot. Two more breaths. Walk your left hand forward, take the left leg back, bring the knee in, bring the left hand down, sweep the right arm up high. And then exhale, take the right hand down to the floor. Then take your left arm up toward the ceiling as high as you possibly can. And then slide that arm underneath. So just slide the arm all the way underneath. Reach the right arm forward if that works for you. Keeping your toes curled under will help you to support the legs. If you want a little bit more stability, reach the right leg back behind you or take the right leg out to the side. Two more breaths. One limb at a time, come back to center. Reaching the left arm up nice and high. And then placing the left hand down. Walk the hands forward just a little teeny tiny bit. Curl your toes under. Lift your knees up off the floor maybe two inches. Setting the hips back behind you. And then drop the knees down a little closer to the ground. And then lift them up. 
and then drop them down and lift them up and then drop them down and then lift all the way up into down and facing dog. Wiggle your feet back a little bit if your heels don't necessarily touch the ground. And then let's think for a moment, cat cow, right? So I want you to inhale and just look forward. Let the heart push forward. So nothing's moving but your spine. Exhale, round the spine, looking back at your thighs. And then inhale, just look forward. So nothing's moving but the spine. Exhale, round it in. Hold the chin into the chest. Now come up high into the toes. Bring the whole body forward to plank. Look forward at the very last second. Pause for three long deep breaths. Beautiful. Make sure you have two blocks if you don't already. As you exhale, pull your chin into your chest, round all the way back into downward dog. Press your heels down toward the floor. Keep your chin into your chest. Round the body forward into a plank pose. Look forward at the very last second. And then as you exhale, pull your chin into your chest, round all the way back into downward dog. Now let's walk the hands all the way back to the feet. So you're at the very back edge of your mat. Take a halfway lift and inhale. And then as you exhale, take that fold. Let your head relax in your forward fold. Hold on to either elbow. Potentially give yourself a little sway from side to side. Good. Two more breaths. We'll release your hands down toward the earth. Take a little halfway lifted inhale. And then as you exhale, take that sweet forward fold. Let's roll up through the spine. Take it a vertebra at a time, reaching the arms up high. Take your two thumbs, go ahead and interlace them so the fingertips reach, right? Take a little teeny tiny back bend. Maybe the heart opens a little bit. Exhale, breathe out through your mouth, pack this thumb. Good, clasp your two hands together at your lower back, lift your heart up a little bit higher, and then exhale, bend at the knees, let your head drop, let your knuckles reach up toward the sky. Let's hold this for a couple deep breaths. Amazing. Slide your two hands down the backs of your thighs. Take a halfway lift and then exhale, fold. Inhale, walk forward to a plank pose. Shift a little bit forward, drop down to the knees, lower your chest and chin, and then flatten your feet, drop your pelvis and your belly, lift your heart, Bhujangasana. And then as you exhale, push back to child's pose. Now in your child's pose, remember you can always come to this pose for a rest right? Don't wait for me to call it out because sometimes I forget to call out child's pose, okay? Do me a favor, point to any area of the body where you've got an injury or anything going on, just so I know. Beautiful. And then if you don't want me to assist you in any postures today, could you just raise your hand? Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. Go ahead and come on up into downward facing dog. Curl the toes, lift the tail. Take your right leg up high, bend at the knee, scorpion dog, roll around in your ankle, roll around in your hip, big huge circles with that hip, and then right leg goes high, push through the toes, knee to the nose, exhale, drop your right foot forward, take your left knee down toward the ground, reach the arms up high, low lunge, exhale, cactus the arms, inhale, reach up. Exhale, sit back, half split. Let's hold for three long deep breaths. Pull the toes toward the face. Let the heart push toward the toes. One more breath. Good, let's bend the knees. Step back into plank pose and inhale. Shift a little bit forward. Take knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga dandasana. Slip your feet and lift your heart into up dog. You can also stick with cobra. Exhale back to down dog. Good, take one big deep breath in and down with dog and then exhale all your breath out. Left leg goes high, bend at the knee, scorpion dog. Roll the run in your ankle. Big huge circles with your hip. And then left leg goes high. 
Knee to the nose, left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, reach. Exhale out through the mouth, practice the arms. Inhale up. Exhale, sit back, half splits. We're just starting with warming the body before we move into sun A's. Kind of seeing where the body is, the one that you brought in with you today, right? Make sure to cultivate awareness around that breath. One more. And then stamping the foot on the floor, stepping back to plank. Shift forward, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, lift the heart, up dog or cobra. And then exhale back into down dog. Take a big deep breath in. <clears throat> Excuse me, sigh the breath out. <sighs> up onto those tippy toes, walk forward to the top of your mat. Take a halfway lift and inhale. And then go ahead and exhale and fold. Inhale, reach your arms up high. Draw the hands to the heart space, Samastiki. Close down the eyes for a moment. <clears throat> so let's remember our theme, right? Our theme is magic. Okay, so just remembering to find magic in our day, right? Like it's so easy to get caught up in all the mind stuff, the minutia, the day-to-day. Let's practice this awareness around breath, okay? Where we can take an ordinary moment and turn it into magic, all right? Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Take your halfway lift and inhale, and then exhale to fold. Beautiful, walk it back into plank pose. Take your inhale, and then exhale. It's chaturanga or knees, chest chin. Inhale, the heart's gonna lift up nice and high. And then as you exhale, push your hips high. Pause for two breaths. So Surya Namaskar A, love it. Meant to really drop you into your body and your breath. Bend your knees, look forward. It's a walk, step, or a float to the top of the mat to halfway lift. And then fold. Inhale, arms up. Hands come to the heart. Let's do it again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Now exhale, plant your hands, walk back through plank and take chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. So that's your whole exhale. Inhale, the heart lifts, the collarbones open. And then exhale, push your hips up nice and high. Hold for one breath in and one breath out. Elongate your spine. Bend your knees, look forward, walk, step or float. Halfway lift and then fold. Inhale up. Hands to heart. Let's do it again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, walk, step, or float back now to Chaturanga. Heart lifts, those collarbones open. And then exhale back to down dog. And then here's the hold. So sometimes I might cue too fast or slow. Just listen to your own breath, right? Bend your knees, look forward, walk, step, or float. Halfway lift to inhale, fold to exhale. Arms up. Hands to heart. Let's just do one more. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Walk, step, or float. Back, chaturanga. Heart lifts. Hips go high. And then here's the hold. Bend knees, look forward. Walk, step, or float. Halfway lift. And then fold. Arms reach. Hands to heart. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. So let's find chair pose. Good. Look forward. And then as you exhale, fly your two hands behind you. Inhale to reach. Exhale, cactus the arms. Good. Inhale, reach. Fly your two hands behind you. Let's hold it here. Come up onto the tippy toes if you want more strength in the pose. Keeping the gaze forward and the breath smooth. Feel free to clasp your two hands together. Long, deep breaths. Don't lose your breath. Drop those heels. Go ahead and forward fold. Knuckles reach up toward the sky again. Shake your head no. Shake your head yes. 
and then slide your two hands down the backs of your thighs. Take a halfway lift and inhale. Exhale to fold. Plant your right hand on the ground or a block directly underneath your nose. Sweep your left arm up nice and high. Bend your right knee. Roll around in your left wrist. Maybe open and close your hand. Take your left hand down. Sweep your right arm up high. Bend your left knee. Let that hand come down to the floor. Halfway lift to inhale. Plant your hands on the mat. Walk, step, or float back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Right leg goes high. Knee to right tricep. Right leg high. Knee to left tricep. Right leg high. Knee to the nose, pause for just a moment. Hollowing out the belly, pulling the knee all the way into the nose. Lifting your right heel towards your bottom, coming up high into your left toes. And then gently dropping your right foot forward, Virabhadrasana one. Back heel spins down, the arms reach. Let's clasp the two hands together, push the palms up toward the sky, amazing. Hug your ears if you can. Maybe you can take a little teeny tiny, eeny weeny back bend. If you can close down the eyes, that's great. If you can't, that's great too. So the ribs expand. One more breath. Exhale, clasp those two hands together now. Roll your heart open a little bit more, making sure you're not pulling on the shoulder heads, right? And then exhale, bow forward, humble warrior. Let your head drop down. On the inside of that front thigh, looking back at your left toes, relax your face if you can. One more breath. Let's inhale, reach up again, eyes open. Exhale, Virabhadrasana two, open the body all the way up into warrior two. So sink down into your warrior two, gazing out over your right fingertips for just a moment. Good, now let's turn the thumbs up and wrap the left elbow underneath the right, wrap to twist. The arms go in front of the face. Think a little bit deeper, gazing at your forearms now. Close down the eyes. Good, good. So now we're unraveling the back of the heart. Beautiful job, ladies, one more. Gorgeous, reverse that warrior to inhale. And then extend your angle as you exhale, reach up and over the head. Now both hands come down to the inside of your front foot, turn to face the long edge of your mat. Beautiful. Turn your toes out, heels in, okay? Bend your left knee, straighten your right leg for skandasana. So bend your left knee, straighten your right leg. Beautiful. Good. Now bend your right knee and straighten your left leg. And then left knee, right leg. And then let's hold when we bend our right knee and straighten the left leg. So you're going to be gazing at your left toes. I keep my fingertips on the ground, but I try to keep my gaze up. If you want to open the shoulder head, put your left hand at your low back. Yes. Good. Good. Squeeze your two shoulder blades together. It's Kim, right? Kim? Yes. Yeah. One more breath. Cool, let's all walk toward our left foot. Pivot on your right toes, put your right hand on the ground and sweep your left arm up high. All right, since I'm recording, those of you in the classroom with me today are gonna have to rely on your auditory skills, okay? Normally I run around the room and demonstrate, but y'all are smart women. Open and close your left hand. Maybe roll around in that left shoulder, be super mindful, okay? Cool, put that left hand on the floor, drop your right knee to the ground, sit back into your half splits. Now three long deep breaths. So I gave you two blocks today, just in case for some reason you can't reach the floor, right? You put your fingertips on the blocks. Push your heart towards your toes and your toes towards your heart. Beautiful, come to standing split, ladies. Left foot down, right toes up. So point your right toes toward the sky. 
So we're going to use this one as a balancing pose. See if you can grab a hold of your left ankle with your left hand. If you can't, it's fine, truly. You'll make it. And then if you want a hip opener instead, bend your right knee. See if you can take that left hand and grab a hold of your right foot. Now, if you're like, no way, no how, it's fine, truly. Just let your head drop. Beautiful, ladies. Put that right foot down right next to your left one. Take a halfway lift and inhale. Exhale, deeper forward fold. Stay with me. Inhale, reach your arms up nice and high. Touch your two palms together above your head. Exhale, practice your arms, elbows down towards your waist. Pass for two hands together at your lower back. Reach your heart up nice and high. Take a gaze at the ceiling. Exhale and fold. Nice. Slide those two hands down the backs of your thighs. Take a halfway lift. And then as you exhale, plant your hands on the mat, walk, step or float back. Cycle through your vinyasa. Remember, vinyasa is just going to create heat. So feel free to skip it. Maybe walk back to down dog. That's fine. Take a big deep breath in through your nose. Exhale all that breath out through your mouth. Gorgeous. Right leg goes high. Bring the knee to the nose. Listen, right leg goes high. Bend at the knee, scorpion dog. Right leg goes high. Now, flex your toes, like you're uh, pulling your toes to your face, and stamping your heel on the ceiling or the wall behind you. Turn your toes out to the right. Now stick your leg out to the right. Like if someone was next to you, you could like lay your foot on their back. Say hi to your IT band. And you can't cuss me out in your mind. Right leg goes back up behind you. Knee to the nose, drop your right foot forward. Come on up into high lunge, facing the back of your mat. Just hold your high lunge. Anything with the hands is great, okay? So you can clasp them, you can bring them to your heart. Let me just give you an option here. You get to choose. But I do want you to press back through your back heel so you really engage that left quad. Make sure you're not gripping the mat with your right toes. One more breath. Cool. Bring your two hands into your heart space. Turn to face me, warrior two. So turn to face the front of the room. Mm -hmm. And then reverse the warrior to inhale. Left arm's going to reach up high. Now let's find triangle pose. All your limbs go straight. Reach forward through the left fingertips. Right fingertips go up nice and high. See if you can take your gaze up toward the right fingertips. Trikonasana. Here's another great place to use the block. You can put it right underneath your fingertips if you want. Two more. One more. And then both hands find the floor. Move that block if you were using it. Step back to plank pose, inhale. Two feet are touching. Hands directly underneath your shoulders, roll over to the right side, take Vashi Stasana on the right side. Right hand down, left fingertips reach up high. Left arm can reach over the head. One more. Stay in your breath. Good, slowly come back through plank. So try not to slingshot out of poses, right? And then left side body down. Right arm goes up high. So really feel like you're pushing your body away from the earth. Flex your toes. Maybe the right arm goes over the head, maybe not. And then slowly find your way back to plank. Feel free to cycle through a vinyasa or just push back to down dog. That's good stuff. Now remember child's pose is an option, okay? We're gonna take about five deep breaths here. You can do child's pose, you can stay in down dog. You could also come down into your forearms for dolphin. Okay, if you're in down dog or dolphin, please focus on the length of your neck. Long deep breaths, just two more.
Cool. Let's look at our hands. Walk, step, or float to Malasana. So take your feet as wide as the mat. Bring your two hands into your heart space. Good. Now you can sit on a block if this is too much too, right? But squeeze the shoulder blades. Make sure you're not rounding, right? This is kind of the norm here, unfortunately. So let's break the norm. Press your knees away from you. Draw the belly button in. Pull the pelvic floor in. Relax your jaw and your face. One more breath. Actually, let's do a lion's breath here, right? So let's go ahead and inhale. Exhale, stick out the tongue, take a third eye gaze. Let's do two more. One more. And then inhale, and then forward fold, exhale. Bring your two feet, hip distance apart. Take a hold of your two big toes for Padagustasana or take your two hands underneath your feet for Padahastasana. So decompressing the spine is always good. So Jupiter in Gemini happens today, very airy, fast moving, social, very different from Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter stays in a sign for an entire year, right? So we're in this new like AI, fast moving, you know, communication, creative expression, abundant time, right? Release your hands, whatever you had grabbing there. And then inhale, Utkatasana to your pose. Whew, a little head rush. If you got a head rush, that's a bonus. Sit as deep as you can. Maybe it's a little art at Utkatasana. Fly the two hands behind you. See if you can clasp them together again, right? Maybe come up onto the tippy toes, but this time, see if you can pull your navel in and start to round down. One more. Drop everything. Slide your two hands down to your... Uh, floor, take a halfway lift, and then exhale, walk, step, float back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Make your way back into down dog. We're going to take that little sequence on the other side. We'll start with the left leg high, knee to the left tricep, exhale. Left leg high. Knee to the right tricep, go underneath your body. Left leg goes high. Knee to the nose, pause for a moment, hollow out the belly, coming up way high onto your right tippy toes, trying to literally kiss your knee. <clears throat> now look forward, gently drop your left foot forward, here the draws to the one. <sighs> you can take that same class, pushing the palms away. You can also switch it up, maybe holding your head. Every now and again, I like to interlace the fingertips, let the elbows wing wide, and just let my head rest. Press into your right pinky toe so you're not in your right knee. Pull up the pelvic floor. Now let the heart rest a little bit. One more. Exhale, release, clasp your two hands together at your lower back. Again, remember you're not pulling on your shoulder heads, you're squishing your shoulder blades together and then bow forward, humble warrior. Looking back at your back toes, making sure you're not gripping them into the mat. Tuck your left butt cheek in. Let your head drop. <sighs> two more. And then inhale, come on up, touch your two palms above your head. Exhale to Virabhadrasana two. So the front foot doesn't move, but the back foot does. Your hips are open to the long edge of the mat. Gaze out over your left fingertips. Good. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Now let's turn the thumbs up. Wrap your right elbow underneath your left. Wrap to twist. Eagle arms, gaze out over your left. Uh, actually, it's both your forearms. <laughs> okay. Close down the eyes if you want. And 
No gripping the mat with your toes. One more breath. <clears throat> and then reverse your warrior to inhale. Extend your ankle to exhale. Elbow comes to the thigh, just reach over the head. Now take both your hands down toward the floor. Turn to face the long edge of your mat. And then right away, let's go toes out, heels in. Bend left knee, straighten right leg. Dandasana. Bend right knee, straighten left leg. Good. Good. Just go side to side. Next time your right leg is long, I want you to hold it. Okay? So it should be the toes that are pointed toward the back edge of the mat. Again, fingertips can stay on the floor, but do your best to lift your heart. So I usually just keep my left hand, in this case, on the ground, put the right hand on the hip, and just start to spiral open. Squeeze your right quadricep. One more. Look at your right foot. Turn to face your whole body toward that right foot. You're going to take your twist. So now your left hand stays on the ground, and the right fingertips sweep up really high. Good. Use your block if you want or you need to. Roll around in your right wrist. Open and close your hands. One more. So good. Both hands find the floor now. Drop your left knee. Sit back into a half split. So here's that beautiful hamstring again. So I like to think about my shoulder blades pulling together like two angel wings, like they have to click in and then the sternum opens, right? Then the collar won't open. And then just relax your face. The standing splits, right foot down, left toes go up nice and high. So they're pointing as best as you can toward the sky, okay? Don't worry if they're pointing toward the back wall. That's what mine end up doing. You can stay right here, grab a hold of your right foot with your right hand, or if you want to bend your left knee, reach up, grab it, feel free. Just make sure you're not yanking on your kneecap. <clears throat> Excuse me, one more breath. And then left foot comes down to meet the right forward fold, facing the back edge of your mat. Let your head relax for a moment. Now, remember, we did this earlier. Once you put your right hand on the block or the floor, bend your right knee, sweep your left arm up high. Now, for more, take your left hand, grab a hold of your right hip, okay? Bend your right knee a lot. Spiral your whole, whole torso over to the left. Drop your right ear down toward your right shoulder. Again, if you get a little chiropractic adjustment, it's bonus. Now go ahead and let that go. Put your left hand on the ground, bend your left knee, sweep your right arm up high, or if you can, grab a hold of your left hip or your thigh. Keep that left knee bent as much as you can. Keep spiraling the heart open toward the right. Beautiful. Tyler, come up onto your fist. Yeah, there you go. A little more space. One more. And then exhale, let that go. Cool, halfway lift, inhale, plant those hands, walk, step, jump back, chaturanga dandasana. <laughs> Ease me, woo. Good. One big deep breath in here, ladies, and then go ahead and sigh your breath out. Hi, left toes point up high to the sky. Bend at the knee for a moment. It's a little scorpion dog. Now the left leg goes high. Now flex your toes so your heel points away from you. Now turn your toes to the left. Stick your left leg out to the side. Pause and hold for a moment. I know. I know. But it's necessary. Left leg goes high. Point your toes. Knee to your nose. Exhale. Left foot forward. High lunge. So you're still facing the back of your mat. Reach your arms up high. <clears throat> Any variation with your arms is great. Literally, like you can decide here, okay? Two more breaths. Back leg really strong. 
Now it's Virabhadrasana two, but point your body toward the front of the room. So turn your whole body toward the front of the room. Fantastic. All right, let's straighten all the limbs. Find triangle pose. Use your block if you want. <clears throat> Love my block. So Kim, put your block up like mine, one inch higher. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully that feels better. Your spine's more aligned now. Good, long deep breaths. Two more. Mm-hmm. Exhale and release. Both hands come down to the floor. Move your block. Let's step back to plank pose. Inhale. This time, let's lower all the way down to the floor as we exhale. It's not Shavasana yet. Let your, let's let the third eye rest on the floor. Take your arms down to your sides for a moment. God, there's just so many poses, so many things I want to do. In one hour. Reach your two arms behind you, palms are down. Zip your two legs up, ladies. Clasp your hands together. Let your knuckles come up off your bottom, but reach them toward the back wall, right? Now, I want you to lift up your right leg, pull it back behind you, and then lift up your left leg and pull it behind you. Press into the tops of your feet, lift your kneecaps. Now, just lift your heart and your arms for Ardha Shalabhasana. Don't worry about lifting the legs. I want you to just do the arms and the heart. Relax your face. Make sure you're breathing. <laughs> One more breath. And then exhale, let it go. Put your right ear on the mat, close down the eyes for a sec. <sighs> now, second option is going to be full shalabhasana, lifting the legs, or you can bend your knees and take bow, all right? So bring your third eye to the floor. Feel free to clasp your hands together again or bend your two knees, reach behind you. Grab a hold of your ankles or the tops of your feet. Either way is great. Exhale all the breath out and then push the heart open and then push the feet into the hands for bow pose. Two more. And then exhale, let it go. Put your left ear on the mat and just close down the eyes for a moment. Now we are gonna come and do a couple of balancing postures. That's what we've been working for. So I want you to gather your energy. And then third eye to the floor, two hands next to the chest, curl your toes under, then use your knees, push up through plank and then all the way back to down dog. All right. Now, let's go ahead and walk seat and hands to the center of your mat. Have your block nearby. I can almost guarantee you're gonna want it, but I never like to guarantee anything. All right, so let's take the left leg and just reach it up as high as you can, okay? And just look back there and see like how high is my leg really, okay? And then flex your toes towards your face. Bring your leg to about hip height. Turn your toes out. Keep your right hand on the floor of the block. Roll your hips open. We're going to Ardha Chandrasana. So nice and slow into Ardha Chandrasana. Reach your left arm up high. Many, 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 many ways to get into these postures. I want you to feel like your back is flat up against the wall behind you. Now bring that left hand down to the floor. Look back at your back leg and make it hip height again, but turn your toes down, okay? And just look back there, you can see, right? Move your block to the left a little bit. Put your left hand on the block. How's your breathing? Keep that leg really strong, like you're trying to imprint the wall behind you. Put your right hand at your low back, lengthen, and take your twist to the right. So twisted Ardha Chandrasana. Not important if you reach your arm up high, because the twist is happening in the mid spine. Now slowly come down, put your left foot down next to your right. This is gonna be really fun, I promise. Now, it's my favorite. Take your two peace fingers on the right side, grab a hold of your right big toe. Left hand is gonna stay on the floor or the block. I'm gonna try mine on the block, I think, today. 
and then push into your left leg and pull your right foot up off the floor. Now keep your gaze forward. Oh, okay. Right leg goes out to the side. Ah, oh, hi, IT band. I love you. Long, deep breath. Talk about magic, huh? Now, when you come down, I want you to come down really slow and put your right foot behind your left and then let your head drop. Oh, so your left leg should be on top. Walk your left fingertips over toward the left or your, both your fingertips, all your fingertips, 10 of them. Well, eight of them and your two thumbs to the left. <laughs> And then mindfully come back through center. <clears throat> Feet are hip distance again. Now you know what we're going to do, right? So that's always fun. Left hand on the block, directly underneath your shoulder. Pick up your right leg as high as you can, and then even it out so it's hip height. Flex your toes. You can look back there. Now open your hip, like you're stacking your two hips on top of each other, right? Now you have to breathe, otherwise this is going to be terrible. Right hand can start at the heart. Potentially, it lifts up into Ardha Chandrasana. Everything's active. Two more. Now, slowly bring that right hand down. Turn your toes down, but keep your leg hip height. Move your block underneath your right hand, okay? Now, heart pulls forward, take your twist over toward the left. Start with your left hand on your back, okay? And just twist open toward the left. Beautiful, beautiful. Activate that back leg, back leg stronger, Claire. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Two more. And then mindfully it comes down, drop your right foot next to your left forward fold. Favorite, peace fingers left side, left big toe, ready? This is the hardest bit, I promise. Pick up that left foot up off the floor. Now see if you can stick that left leg out to the side. Oh. Okay, I know where my work is. I don't know about you guys. Okay, let that leg come down behind your right foot. <laughs> I know what I'm doing in my practice every day. Walk your hands over toward the right. <sighs> so humbling. One of my teachers and colleagues, I should say, actually, uh, taught me a long time ago. She said, you can never lie in your body when you practice yoga. It's like, it's such a truth-telling practice. <laughs> Go ahead and release. Come back to center. Walk your hands forward. Take your feet back to down dog. Oh. Shake your head no and yes. And then let's stick that right leg up high because it probably will feel really good. Bend at the knee. And then drop your right foot forward. Left knee to the ground. Sit back to half splits to start. We did some hamstring stuff, so if you feel like you can take full splits, feel free. How are you doing, Tyler? No, you're not. <laughs> so there's a midpoint between half splits and full, which I am stuck at in my life, and I'm fine with it. If you put a block underneath your thigh, and then lift the heart. This is about as far as I've gone in probably eight years. Yeah, you can double stack too. Just make sure that your low back does. Just make sure you don't, you're stable. So that doesn't look stable to me, but just be stable. Drop your shoulders, Sherry. Drop your shoulders like this. Go like this. There. Good. Now, the, the, the place where most people get hurt 
in class is coming out of poses. So you need to be super mindful when you come out. Curl your back toes under first for support. Slide the leg back, right? And then in between, because I want to go to pigeon, in between, take that right leg up, shake it out a little bit. And then we'll find pigeon. Okay, so just bring the right foot back forward again. Walk it over to the left side of the mat and find pigeon pose. Good. So here's where the block comes in handy too. If you put the block underneath your cheek again, you'll lift your hips a little bit because you want your a 90 degree angle from ankle to knee to hip. Walking the arms forward, letting the height rest. Relax your jaw. Nice, ladies. Oh, that was fun. Hmm. So one of the things, one of the best things you could do during this energy of the full moon, which is still pretty potent and Jupiter moving into Gemini is yes, you know, recognize kind of what needs to be let go of in your life, right? That's a full moon for you, but also make some pretty big wishes, like dreaming really big. Like what is it that you really, really, really want? You know? Two more. And then mindfully bring the body back up. Take your right leg up high to a three-legged dog. You'll shake the right leg out. You could also flip it. Now I'm going to go through this wild thing really, really slowly. I want you to bend your knee if you're going to flip with me, okay? Shoulders over wrists. And then put your right toes on the ground. Straighten your left leg. And really keep that right knee bent as you arch your spine to look toward the front of the room. And then when you come out, pelvic floor up and in, belly in, turn your body back toward the mat into down dog. Okay, so you got to engage that center line there. Okay, uh, left leg goes up high to the sky as you inhale. Drop your left foot forward, right knee to the ground, sit back to half splits. So again, you can play in full splits or three-quarter splits. Watch those shoulders there, Claire. There you go. The blocks are magic. <laughs> Two more. Now, before we go to pigeon, please let's make sure that we come out of this pose slowly, right? Come out of it mindfully, move any props that you have. Shake your left leg out and above your head in your three-legged dog. And then find pigeon. Just let your body rest in this pose, right? So I know sometimes that seems like a oxymoron rest in pigeon pose, but try to find the spaces where you can let go, right? Like maybe it's just the jaw or the forehead. Maybe it's the hands.
Two more. And then mindfully coming out of pigeon pose, both hands come to the floor, left leg can go up. You can just shake that leg out if you want. I'll cue you through wild thing again, right? So you're gonna bring your shoulders over your wrist. You're gonna flip the pose with the right leg straight, left knees bent, left toes on the ground. So keep your heel up high. Ben. There you go, Claire, nice. Good, good. One more. Beautiful, Sherry, nice job. And then when you come back around, go super slow, drop your left foot down to meet your right. Last downward dog of the day. Take a big deep breath in, lift your heels up, sigh your breath out and drop your heels. Good, bend your knees, look forward, walk, step or float through to a seat. <clears throat> so I wanna pick one seated forward fold before I bring you onto the back. So I'm gonna give you some options. One is uh, Paschimottanasana with just legs long, okay? Uh, this is great. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, you can bring the soles of the feet together, knees apart, Baddha Kanasana. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want more, you can take your legs out wide. Whatever forward fold you choose, I want you to make sure you're not rounding your spine. So you're going to inhale to lengthen. Legs are active. And then you're going to exhale to fold. Shoulder blades down. Good. So we're never pulling, right? <clears throat> Good. 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 Just take three more breaths, allowing the spine to relax and the face to relax. <clears throat> One more breath. Good. Mindfully go ahead and bring your body back. If you had your legs out wide, grab a hold of the space behind your knees. Make sure there's space behind you and that you have your blocks nearby. And then go ahead and have a lie down on the back. When you get to your back, let's take happy baby. Grab a hold of your two big toes or behind your knees and just pull those knees down toward the armpits. <clears throat> and then now hug both knees into the chest and just start to rock, rock and roll side to side. So just allow your body to really release in the low back. Beautiful. Let's take one back bend, bridge pose. If you have wheel in your practice, feel free to take it, but I'm not going to cue you through it today. Uh, feet are hip distance, walking your fingertips down toward those heels. Mm -hmm. Press into the floor, inhale, lift your hips up high. Now, if you wanna relax in this pose, just put your block right at your low back. Okay, if you wanna open your shoulders more, clasp your two hands together, let your knuckles reach towards your feet, gaze stay straight up to the sky, okay? So never looking around in bridge pose. <sighs> two more breaths. And then slowly lower down, hugging knees into chest again. Let's hug them in as deep as we possibly can. Almost like you could get your knees into your armpit. And then take your left leg nice and long. Just extend it out. Keep your right knee hugged in as deep, deep, deeper, deeper. And then cross that right knee up and over the left side. Laying on your left hip bone, taking your arms out wide like wings, like a letter T or even cactusing them, gaze goes to the right. <clears throat> Both shoulder blades are on the ground. And mindfully coming back through center, hugging your knees into your chest. <clears throat> 
Keeping that left knee in as deep as you can. Extend your right leg long. Hugging in one little bit deeper and then crossing it over the right side. Keeping the gaze toward the left now. Arms are out like a T. Closing down the eyes. This practice shows up in all of our ways throughout our day. Sometimes we don't even notice it, right? But it shows up in the way that we respond to people. It shows up in the way that we process our thoughts, that we notice our frustration in moments, right? When we hear the subtleties of what other people are really trying to say, like that's really why we practice, you know. Coming back to center, hugging your two knees into your chest and taking Shavasana. So you have two blocks and I sometimes if I need my heart open, I'll take one block directly underneath my two shoulder blades and then the other block will end up right at the base of my head, right? So if you just lay it right at your shoulder blades and then right at the head, this one might go up a little higher and then you can really feel it. I feel like everybody needs to do this every day with our lifestyle now, right? And if it is painful, then don't do it. But if it's like just slightly uncomfortable, then it's probably because you need it. And I like to support the neck too, because we don't want the neck to go too, um, like we don't want the head hanging too low, right? And if you feel like you got it, then relax. And if you're unsure, uh, raise your hand and I'll come over and support you. Yeah, I just feel like this is, something that we need to all be doing with our lifestyle now. The way it is. Taking a big deep breath in when you found your spot and then exhaling all of your breath out through your mouth. Amazing, 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 amazing.
the magic of our life, I think, happens in every moment. But mostly in the moments that we're present, potentially still. Bringing the body back into awareness by wiggling the toes and the fingers. Definitely moving around in the jaw. If you chose to lay on the blocks, uh, coming off the block slowly, right? So you can definitely reach through your arms and fingertips and legs and toes. But when you come off the blocks, just come off slowly, roll to one side. And then coming up to a seat right where we started from, placing one hand on the earth and one hand at the heart. One hand at the earth, reminding us that every step we take is pretty magical. One hand at the heart, just to remember the connection that we have, right? With this earth, with the cosmos, with ourselves, with each other. And then taking the hand that's at the earth, placing it on top of the hand that's at the heart, and then interlacing the fingertips again, just like we began class, uh, hands pressing into the heart space. We'll end with the sound of OM, and I want you to really feel the vibration in the heart space. So we'll take one cleansing breath first, inhale through the nose. <sighs> and then inhale again. Ooh. Thank you so much, ladies. Such a pleasure. Have such a beautiful day. Namaste. Namaste.